Hello, I'm Richard Van Wyhe with EV for You Custom Conversions, and welcome to another episode of the EV Answer Man. Today we're going to talk about something that probably is one of the most asked questions, and that is why don't you just hook up an alternator to the vehicle and uh, charge the batteries while you're driving? And so we're going to address that. And then there's variations of that. You know, how about a solar panel on the roof of the car? How about a wind turbine? So forth. So we're going to address that. And so as you can see at a glance here, you know why I'm in the uh, conversion business, because I ain't no artist. But anyway, we'll see if we can make some heads or tails out of this. First off, we're going to have an electric vehicle that typically from our experience and, and that of others, we have found that it takes about 10 watt hours well, that's not right. I'm sorry. To figure the range, we're going to take the weight of the vehicle and divide by 10. So, in this example, we're going to use our little orange Carmen Ghia, which weighs 2,200 pounds. And we divide that by 10. We know it's going to take 220 watt hours per mile to move that vehicle. Now this is, you know, we're going to simplify this. We're not going to go into a physics lesson. We're not accelerating up to speed. We're not doing 80 miles an hour, any of that. This is the normal, average, customary type of uh, example. So we're cruising along and our vehicle is going to consume 220 watt hours per mile as an electric vehicle. Battery powered only. So now, what if we add an alternator? And we're going to connect that alternator to uh, the motor, you know, the, the, one of the shafts on the motor with a pulley and you can hook it to an axle, whatever. I don't care. But now we're turning our alternator. So as we're going down the road, the alternator is turning. Here's the part of this that most people um, aren't thinking about and that is that if that alternator is going to be charging our battery pack, there's going to be a load on that alternator. And so, instead of traveling a mile now, we have the extra load resistance of that alternator, and we're not going to go as far. So let's say we go that far because of the additional drag of the alternator. It also adds a little bit of weight and so forth, but we're not going to worry about that kind of thing for this example. Suffice to say that it has drag. If you, uh, if you have the belt, the alternator belt on your, uh, your vehicle and it's a little bit loose and you turn on the headlights, you'll hear that belt squeal. The reason is there's a load on that alternator. And for that alternator to be charging our battery pack, there's going to be a load. So that's going to cut back our range then because of that load. But at the same time, we are putting some, some energy back into our battery pack. And so that will get us down here a little bit further. But the amount of energy required to turn the alternator is going to be greater 
than the energy we get out of the alternator. Bottom line. If you don't believe me, go ahead and set it up and uh, keep, keep some records of what you're doing and you'll, you'll see that that is true. Law of physics, we can't get around it. So, by adding an alternator, we're actually decreasing our range, not increasing our range. What about solar? We can, you know, they've got these new flexible panels and so forth, and we cover the, the vehicle with solar. Well, we're going to say that, you know, they're thin light panels. They don't adversely affect the aerodynamics. They don't adversely affect the rolling resistance. And so the car is going to roll down the road with no, uh, with no uh, additional load or resistance, unlike our alternator example. So now we have the, the solar is putting some energy back into our pack. The downside to the solar is that these panels don't put out enough energy per square foot available on a, on a vehicle to gain as much of anything at all. Not going to really be measurable, probably. Again, try it out and get back to me. I'd be interested to, to know what kind of results you get. The other thing is we've increased the cost and the cost difference, uh, you know, you figure the cost per mile, you're better off adding additional batteries if you want more range than you would be adding solar. The size of a panel that you would need to propel the average electric vehicle 12,000 miles a year is a panel 6 feet by 16 feet. And that's over a period of a year. So the amount of time that you're driving your vehicle and the amount of time that the, the solar panels collecting energy, uh, that's all averaged out over a year. And so that's bigger than most vehicles. Uh, but you put it on a trailer, but then you're going to have the extra drag. So last, let's talk about uh, the wind turbine. And again, people fail to think about the realities of the wind turbine or an alternator in that they're not free energy. They represent resistance. And so this is going to cause drag of the vehicle moving forward. And so I'm no longer going to be consuming 220 watt-hours per mile. I'm going to be consuming more. And so due to that wind, you know, that resistance, that drag caused by the wind turbine, I'm only going to go so far. But again, as in with the alternator, it will be putting some energy back into our pack. And so, we will gain a little bit. But again, the net result is an overall loss. So out of these four examples, the two that would get us the greatest distance on that 220 watt hour pack that I have in my little example here, would be just the, the electric vehicle, the battery power by itself, or the solar. But this is going to be a much more expensive proposition. These two aren't worth the trouble. They're going to up the cost, up the, the complexity, and decrease your range. So you don't want to go that direction. But we thought we'd address this uh, in this format since this is a question that is received 
on a daily basis, multiple times. And so instead of cutting and pasting my response, we're going to uh, refer you to a little video and you can hopefully see what we're talking about. One of these days we'll put together another example where we'll show uh, a little hand generator or alternator and show you uh, what we mean by the load. Without a load on it, they spin rather easily. As soon as you put a load on there, it's a different scenario. And so, you don't get free energy. In order to get energy out of the alternator, you're going to require energy in. And the energy in is going to be greater than the energy out. Well, as always, if you have any questions or comments, don't, don't comment on the, on the YouTube video, uh, on the YouTube site. Send us an email at info at ev4unow.com and we'll get back to you. The, uh, the YouTube visit isn't uh, as convenient for us at least and uh, so those don't always get answered. But if you email us, we'll get back to you. So if you have any questions or comments, shoot us an email. And until next time, I'm Richard Van Wahey for the EV Answer Man. And thanks for watching. All right, just want to share again with you about our three-day hands-on conversion workshops. We typically have four a year. We just had our first one this year last weekend. What we do in a three-day conversion workshop is we'll talk about all the components uh, that are used in a conversion. We talk about how they all go together and, and how to uh, figure the uh, range and speed and size of the pack, what things are you know, compatible, that type of thing. So we'll, we'll talk about the vehicle choice and the things to consider from you know, aerodynamics to rolling resistance to um, appropriate battery locations, that type of thing. And we'll talk about EV terms, batteries, a lot of time spent on batteries, Ohm's Law, motors, AC and DC, adapters, couplers, and, and motor mounts. Hardware used in a conversion. Uh, how can you tell the difference between a grade 8 and a grade 5? And where would you use one versus the other? A clutch or no clutch. Controllers. Throttle controls. Contactors and relays. And depending on the group of uh, participants uh, and their level of, of knowledge, uh, we've had groups where there were engineers in the room that uh, knew a lot about a lot more about some of these things than I do and then we'll have people that have never you know experienced any of this before and so we've had uh, a group one time where we took a relay apart and not only did they see the schematic diagram and have it explained but they got to see it in action watch it work to where they had a, an understanding of what was going on that's the whole idea we we'll talk about wiring, both your 12 volt and your high voltage wiring, uh, you know, what gauges and all sorts of stuff. It's more involved than you would think. Schematic diagrams, series and parallel circuits, emergency and service disconnects, DC to DC converters, chargers, instrumentation, back to the vehicle here, power brakes, power steering, heating and air conditioning. There is maintenance to an electric vehicle, big one. We talked about it first and last, safety. And then like I mentioned in the beginning, how it all goes together. How do we bring all these components together in an efficient, safe, and reliable way so that we can propel our car down the road with these components over the long run, every day, with 
without fail. And so we've had people come from all over North America and attend these classes. And uh, it's somewhat of a, a chore to get to us in that uh, we don't have an international airport uh, in our community. Um, but we have one three hours away, and so a lot of people fly into Sacramento, California, rent a car, and come on up. That's actually from the airport, we're only about a little over two hours. Um, and just this past uh, weekend, we had a guy from New York that flew into San Francisco and drove from San Francisco. It was actually cheaper to rent a car and drive from San Francisco than it was to fly from Reading to San Francisco. But once you're here, we share with you all we can. There's plenty of time for questions and answers. Um, everybody has always left very excited about getting started and uh, using their new gained information. Uh, the three days we feed you lunch, we go to local restaurants that uh, really serve a, an outstanding lunch. The last day we actually go to a, a restaurant that not only has uh, good food but great ambiance, overlooks uh, the uh, Lake Shasta and uh, the Pitt River Bridge, which is the tallest double-decker bridge in the world, or so I'm told. And we also, uh, one day after lunch, we, we drive a few miles from here and we Take a look at the three Shastas. It's an overview where you get to see uh, Shasta Dam, which is the second largest concrete structure in the United States. You get to see Lake Shasta, which is the largest lake in California. And you get to see Mount Shasta, which in mass is the largest volcano in North America. Not the tallest, just the largest in mass. And it's over 14,000 feet tall. Beautiful view. Uh, Many people wish they had more time to spend in the area. There's so much to see here. Um, but come for the uh, workshop, stay for the scenery. Hope you can make it. Also wanted to remind you about our video that we offer. For those that have the, uh, the opportunity or time to attend one of our three-day hands-on conversion workshops, and the next best thing would be to have the how to convert from gas to electric the complete video. Basically goes over all the same information but without the opportunity to actually work with the components and uh, have that interaction between instructor and um, so it's it's never going to be on par with attending a workshop but it would be the next best choice for those who can't make a workshop. We also, for those that uh, have a group of people that are interested in a workshop, and we've done this for uh, high school and college instructors, if you have a group that you would like to have us come and, and talk to, we offer both a one-day educational workshop as well as the three-day workshops and we, we offer those throughout the Western United States. So for information on the workshops and the video, go to ev4unow.com and that should answer all your questions. If you want additional information, email us at info at ev4unow.com. Hope to see you at one of the workshops.